It's Madden NFL 22, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Bengals and the Eagles, and it comes your way next. The city of Philadelphia is one of rich history and passion, and you can always count on the ladder when you step inside Lincoln Financial Field. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago. Boy, the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly, as they get ready to match up with the Cincinnati Bengals. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and CD, our matchup here in this one, as so many do, revolves around the quarterback position. We've got an interesting pairing here. And both of them have terrific ability to improvise, and that means when the first read's not there, how quickly can you go through your progressions? Can you hang in there and take a shot as you release it? Can you buy time outside of the pocket? Can you pull it down and run if need be? I think we'll see all of those traits on display in this one. Some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And trotting out there, their tall quarterbacks standing at 6'5". What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. On first down, Esiason. And Woods has it. Complete. Five yards on the game's first play. Second down. On second down, here's Esiason. Trying to lay one up deep. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Defense had a chance to get off the field here in the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches, and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized, and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. So first and 10 now from the 30. On first and 10, it's Esiason. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 
And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. They'll run on first down. It's Woods, and he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. On second down. It's Woods, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That second down playing, that's a minus four. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you follow him in at varying levels, because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room third down. It's Woods. And they'll get this across the midfield straight, but still winding up short of the first down. Give him eight yards on the carry, and that's going to bring up fourth down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll try and run for it. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Well, that's what's called being aggressive right there. But I don't know that it's reckless. I think it's much more of a message. A defense, I believe in you in case we don't get it. An offense, trying to let him know he believes in him as well. I like it. Your first drive of the game in plus territory. Be aggressive. On first down, it's Woods. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now with Siasson on second down. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. A big play there on the catch and run. Execution was one of their watchwords leading up to this one. And on that play, able to execute brilliantly here on this opening drive. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here. If this close, sneak it. I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. Looking to throw on second down. And he's going to go down. Same back at the 13-yard line. This will cost him 11 yards there on the second and goal sack. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense. So the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And down inside the 10 here. Before he's out of bounds, right around the 7. 
They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough. Fourth and goal. And a good sign for them right now to have their young quarterback looking confident on the opening drive. Now, we haven't met a young quarterback, a veteran quarterback. It doesn't matter. We haven't met a quarterback yet that doesn't tell us he's confident about his abilities, right? That's true. But when you're young, it's really important to get off to a good start because it does build up that confidence and allows him to play better as the game goes on. Especially crucial here on the road. Evan McPherson out for the Bengal field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. McPherson's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3-0. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. McPherson now to send it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. And we get a glance here at their leader. The man will be calling the plays under center. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the guys who have helped him along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great job, QB, he's usually the guy who springs for the good stuff. Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. On second down, it's McCoy. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. From the gun, here's McNabb. He finds his man complete. It's Owens. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. that you might say are important for a free safety, and we saw both in evidence there. And you can just see that whole play developing. That's where, as a defender, you just lock in on your target and say, I'm not even thinking about breaking stride. I'm running straight for the belt buckle because where it goes, that's where you find his body, and he was able to get in there and make a great play. And the final number, pretty impressive courtesy of next-gen stats, 21.4 miles per hour. Now a first down throw, McNabb. And complete to Zach Ertz. And he's taken down inside the 30. A lot of tight ends just use 
because their size and their strength try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Well, I think the hope is, you know, with a touch pass like that, then maybe you catch the defense off guard, but they were all over that one. And it is the kind of play that works better against certain defenses, and this clearly was the wrong one to run into. Really nice job getting him down behind the line of scrimmage. Behind the chain, second and 12. Out of the gun, McNabb. And a quick throw here, that's complete. So the pitch and catch good for 11. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll try and run for it. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit, and that's what he did on that play. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Now it's McNabb. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. So on now, the field goal team for Philadelphia. And his kick here is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that goal of tennis on the NYU. You like to mix it up with sports. You like to crack a forehand back out and get a backhand. So his return of the was a backhand. I like that. A really good backhand. It's a nice top spin on the little bit. I love it. Almost a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. Oh, trying to gauge the sun, and he muffs it. And he'll just take a seat in the driveway to get up the 25-yard line. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. 
And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal, and I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. And yeah, not out now joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. Throwing on first down. Esiason, he's going to loft one deep left side here. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. So much about defending the pass is being able to be right there the moment the ball gets to the receiver. And he was right in his hip pocket, helping force that incompletion. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Hands it off out of the gun. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. You mentioned very early on the need to establish a running game for this young QB. They really haven't been able to do that, though, in the first half. So that means what in halftime? Adjustments, Adjustments time, right? Figure out what they are. Figure out the things that they really want to accomplish and who to run behind. Which are your better blockers? Find those guys and get in that direction. Now Bengals on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Woods. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They go play action with the science. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to, give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're not really going to have to. Back to throw again. And that will be incomplete as well. From the snap, he certainly looked like he never wanted to go for the ball. The surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. On first down, it's McNabb. Zach Ertz has it complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. I'll give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. He was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice game. On first and 10, McNabb. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. 
Had to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly, got a great break on the ball, and able to force that incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's McNabb. He finds his man complete. That's Owens. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 43. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. in the slot for the catch. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Finding Ertz again. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. McNabb to throw. Caught on the slant. Touchdown! Zach Ertz from six yards away. And the Eagles have taken the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Extra point forthcoming. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10-3 now. Time of six plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. start at the 25. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. 
The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Operating from the gun. Esiason finding green complete. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. He's been the forgotten man in this first half. Not a guy you want to forget. Not only his first catch, first time they've targeted him. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Not because those are the types of plays that he provides. When he does come alive, when they do look his way, not only is it a big catch, it's a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Bearing it out deep for Woods. And it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to help him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. He's going to air it out deep for Green. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big play that time through the air. 45 yards. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Cincinnati. And they weren't able to get a whole lot done throwing the football. That'll likely be a big key if they want to turn things around in the second half. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, they too found some success throwing the football. But I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. So the Eagles with the lead, and they're going to get this football first as the third quarter gets underway. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 